Yo, what's going on guys? Today we got a really cool video and an even cooler part to put on my CR250 Supermoto and it is the new Lectron H-Series carb. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about it, some of the new features and what they mean and then we're going to be doing a step-by-step -step installation of this carb on my bike. Right away I'm going to tell you what the changes are to this carburetor. So starting off, let's get it out. This carburetor has a brand new molding. Along with a redesigned bell here. So I believe it has a larger and more tapered surface. But what this does is allow a lot more airflow through. It also has a redesigned slide. And they gave me, I believe, two slides. Um, I think they gave me an extra option to try out for this Supermoto. But anyways, the slide is also redesigned. Electron also says that the power jet will be activated earlier, which will increase the mid-range of the bike. It claims to have twice as much idle adjustment, as well as a lighter throttle pull, and I believe that's by using a different spring. They also give you the option to get a heavier pull, I guess you would change the spring. And the carb overall is a little bit shorter in length, so that should help with the installation. So in combination, these changes, what do they mean? They claim from dyno testing a KTM 250, a 20% increase in torque and horsepower below 5,000 RPMs. So just a lot more pickup on the low end, especially for a two-stroke, you guys know. And again, the higher airflow through this carburetor is going to increase the fuel pickup, and it's also going to increase the overall performance, meaning a faster, quicker hit for you guys right off the bottom, through the mid-range, and carrying into the top end. And I have to say, guys, I did get a deal on this carburetor. I ended up paying a little more than half price for it. And I'm really, really appreciative of that. But I did spend a good bit of my own money on this carburetor. And that's because I did a lot of research and I just believe in it. And I think it's going to be the right decision for my Supermoto CR250. Now that being said, they did hook it up with a free hat. Thanks guys, and they threw in a couple stickers. Like I said, I think they gave me two different slides to test in the carb along with the carb adjusting tool. So thank you guys, really appreciate that. And I plan on giving you guys my honest opinion of this carburetor and we're gonna all see how it performs together. So after hearing all of those new features and stats, I'm really excited to get this carburetor on the bike. First thing I'm gonna do is start the bike up right now with the old McCuny carburetor, so you guys can see how it starts and how it idles, and I'll rev it up a little bit for you guys to hear it. Then I'm gonna be taking that carburetor out and installing the new Lectron, showing you guys how to hook it up, and we'll do the same test again. So there you have it. That's how the bike is running right now. And I gotta be honest, that wasn't a true cold start. I actually forgot to have the microphone turned on the first time. So it warmed up a little bit, but you can see it, it idles okay. Um, it actually starts to even load up with oil after just idling a little bit. And if I don't rev it completely and clear it out, it just gets all clogged up and loaded up this carburetor. And then the bike sputters when I try to hit the gas. 
So I have the bike jetted for a lot cooler temperature and that's why it's running extra rich right now. But honestly, on the top end, it's not bad. And when I'm riding this bike, once I clear it out, it runs super strong. I've already changed the needle in this carb and both of the jets, so I got it working better than it was, but now we get to put the Electron on the bike and see how it runs with that. I'm expecting it to idle a lot better and the carb shouldn't load up, so I should be able to cruise on the highway, let the bike idle in traffic, and have no problem still being able to rip it. So this should be pretty obvious, but you do not have to remove your exhaust pipe or the subframe just to change the carburetor on this CR, but I have this battery that I put up in here and there's some wiring too, which won't allow me to spin the carburetor at all. It just hits the battery instead of spinning. So I actually have to remove the subframe on this supermoto just to rejet, and that was the biggest reason that I wanted to get the Electron, but I'm actually going to be taking that battery out and running a high output stator. I will be able to move the Electron, spin it once it's in there, and make adjustments as needed. I'm actually going to be repacking this exhaust. As you can see, it was leaking a lot of oil. It does this regularly, and it was leaking so much from cruising on the highway that I actually had to tape this part off because oil was starting to shoot out of where this bolt goes in. So I have some new FMF two-stroke packing and I'm going to repack this while I'm at it. I shouldn't have to worry about this thing clogging up again. No more battery and all the wiring is out. Got it cleaned up, ready for the Electron install. So the last thing before I install this carburetor, I just wanna give you guys a look up close of the difference between the two of them. So as you can see, this bell shape has a much more gradual slope into the carburetor. And again, this was part of the special design of this carb to increase that low-end pickup increase the torque and horsepower right off of the bottom. 
We can see the famous clear float bowl right here. This is such an awesome feature. So this carburetor, again, does not have any jets. It uses a metering rod technology. And you can see the difference between the two needles, how much thicker this one is. And it's actually flat on one side. But anyways, this carburetor, if you want to understand how to tune it like a conventional carb, think of it like this. You have the idle adjustment, which is the same on both. And you can also change these rods. So this one is a 4-3. And the first number indicates the mid to top end and the lower number indicates the at idle. So this one has a fairly rich mid to top and it has a rich idle as well. Now they also gave me a 4-2. So if the bike doesn't like to idle or it's not performing well in the low to mid range, I can switch to this needle, which is a 4-2. And to make smaller adjustments from off idle to mid, you can turn this meter a quarter turn at a time to richen or lean it up. And the last thing we have is the power jet. So this actually pulls fuel from the float bowl and shoots it back in. And this will control how the bike runs at wide open throttle. So if the bike is sputtering and it's too rich, we can adjust it. Or if it's too lean and bogging on the top, then we can adjust it as well. And you use this little tool to adjust the metering rod. You don't want to be adjusting it with a pair of pliers because this rod is very sensitive if you scratch it. It's machined a very specific way, so you don't want to mess that up. This carb also comes with a choke, and this is the fuel line right here. So enough talking. Let's throw this baby in, put the bike back together, and see how it runs. quick things I want to point out. The old carburetor fit in here real easily, but this one took quite a bit of force to press in and you want to make sure that you get it over the CNC edge that they have. But yeah, I really had to push that thing in there. It's in there good and should form a really tight seal. The other thing is I tried every standard and metric hex head that I had to remove these top slide bolts. What I ended up figuring out is you need a Torx drive to fit this. Nothing else will work, has to be a Torx drive. And I found out that T15 is what you need to take these top ones out. So that should save some of you guys some time when you're going to put the slide in. It took me forever to figure out what would work to get them out. Now I have the cable lubed and ready to install and then I'll hook it up to the slide in a second.
done. Last thing to do is just fill up this bowl. God, that's just crazy, seriously. Started up on the second kick. I barely needed to adjust the idle. I turned it down a little bit, thinking it would be better. Perfect right where it was. And you guys heard it. I was revving that thing out and it screams. It's ridiculous. I can feel it right away off the bottom. There's better response. The, the power is so smooth all the way through revving it and it shakes so hard. This bike freaking shakes. I mean, it's a 252 stroke. You guys know these things shake. But when I was wide open, man, you can straight up feel the difference in power after bolting this on. Crazy. So I was kind of expecting to have to make a few adjustments with it, but seems like it is ready to go. So it's supposed to rain like all day tomorrow, which is my birthday and my plan was to ride this bike. So I'm probably gonna go do that right now and then that'll tell me a lot and see if the bike needs any adjustments, but I'm thinking it's good to go. And I need to say this, but I really didn't wanna get Electron for the longest time. You know, I tried to make my carburetor work the best that I could, which it was working pretty decently, but this is no comparison and I'm so glad I did this. Wait till you guys see the comparison videos that I have coming when we test it. I'm sure the results are gonna blow us all away. Yeah. 